Korean pop culture has swept the globe in recent years, and unless you've been living under a rock, you at least heard of BTS. I think most big impact of Korean culture is um, obviously K-pop. They start learning about Korean culture and you know Korean food. South Korea has officially been a developed country for over three years, attracting immigrants from all over the world, many of which are non-passing for Korean. In which case, living in a homogenous society begs the question, is there prejudice against non-Koreans, and more particularly, black foreigners? Successful TV personality Sam Okiere shed light on how living as a black man in South Korea has been for him. But what about black women? My team members Tima Peabody and Miles J traveled with me to Seoul to find out by interviewing YouTube and TV personalities Megan Bowen, Whitney Bay, and Jenny Johnson. Hello. Hello. Like I was like I got like one eye. So. Oh. Oh. Okay. Our first stop was with Megan Bowen. She started her YouTube career sharing her experiences living in South Korea as a black woman and English teacher. She has since appeared in Korean media and works for a television station along with Hyunwoo from Talk To Me In Korean. What was your first biggest reason in moving all the way here from the States? Ever since I was little I had always just found it interesting that there were like other cultures and other people. Cause I did grow up like in the hood in College Park, Georgia. And like, I don't know, I was just like always seeing the same people. And whenever I would bring up stuff about other cultures, people are like, oh, that's silly, that's silly. So I always felt like, well, I want to learn about like the way other people do stuff. As I was like nearing like college, I started thinking, oh, well, what countries would I want to move to? And then I just stumbled upon Korea one day. We met a lot of people so far during this trip and they teach here, but they also have a love for K-pop already. Mm -hmm. like, it wasn't like they came to Korea and oh yeah, here's K-pop, mm -hmm. you know? They already knew about it, but for you, you weren't exposed to that, right? Or what were you already exposed? Well, I was a bit, but I didn't like it at first. But the reason why I came was the food, actually. Me and my friend, we would go to like a different country's restaurant like once a week. Mm -hmm. And so then we stumbled upon the Korean food and I was like, oh my goodness, this is so good. Mm -hmm. Then we had met like somebody else who had, likes Korean dramas and she wanted to taste Korean food too. So we would go around and try a new like Korean restaurant every week. When I was at the restaurant, I heard people like speaking Korean. And I was like, oh, this sounds like really nice. Like I really like the language. We asked this question to a different K vlogger, Whitney Bay. Whitney uploads comical content on her channel and also shares her life in South Korea as a black woman. She has grown her following from doing entertaining and unique activities while sharing her love for Korean culture. Jenny Johnson from J Hearts J volunteered to share her thoughts on these questions as well. Jenny's channel has been around since 2013, and she shared what it's like being with a Korean partner as a black woman in Korea. She is now married to her husband and makes posts of their beautiful baby boy. Actually, in college, one of my, or my roommate, my college best friend, she was really into like Korean dramas and stuff like that, which I had never really watched before, even though I'd had a bunch of Korean friends in high school and stuff. So we started watching them together, and I was like sort of into it. I wasn't like one of those like, I don't know, Korea boo type of girls, but I was like mildly interested. And then one of my other friends moved to Korea to teach English, and she told me she was having fun and I had just graduated from college. This is in 2008 and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I thought like, oh, like I've seen some dramas. They look good. Why don't I try it? <laughs> so I just like a month later, I just packed my stuff and I came to Korea and 
for the most part, I've been here ever since, since 2008. I've always wanted to live abroad. I thought I would be living in Europe. Um, I studied abroad in England, so I lived in England for a year um, and traveled around Europe, and I thought that I would eventually end up in Europe. So Asia wasn't really like on my radar at all, to be honest, um, but in the end, like I felt like after living here for a little while, I was like, okay, I think like this, maybe this is where I'm, you know, meant to be. How do Koreans feel about immigrants in their country? Susanna Wong is a Korean immigrant who has been living in America for over 10 years. She is a co-owner of the PN Event Company, which is located in Dallas, Texas, and they coordinate traditional Korean ceremonies, birthdays, and more. Nowadays, it's more uh, personal reference mm -hmm. to live in different country because mm -hmm. Like many of my friends does that. They are in Japan, Korea, they are everywhere because they want to have different life, life experience. But back in the day, it was more, I see a lot of uh, foreigners moving to Korea because of their job. That's how I think the, I can say like first immigrants who is not Korean is moved to Korea. That's why I see a lot of you know, foreigners, they are teachers at you know certain academy or I, I saw a lot of teachers you know when, while I was in um, Korea. That's the kind of bright side of you know whoever moved to Korea, the immigrants. But the dark side is being immigrant here in the United States. There's always you know controversial topics. Let's say you're immigrant but you are from Europe. People are very favorable. It's like, oh you're from Europe. Um, you move here because of your job or better life, blah, blah, blah. But let's say you are from, I don't know, China or Korea or where the country consider is not powerful as uh, America. You have easily have that stereotype, oh, probably they are, you know, illegal. My administration has presented Congress with a detailed proposal to secure the border and stop the criminal gangs drug smugglers, and human traffickers. It's a tremendous problem. That's everyone's, you know, typical stereotype uh, whenever you think of those kind of immigrants. Korea is the same too. Do you see a lot of YouTube videos out there? It's like, oh my god, I moved to Korea, I'm gonna, I'm a teacher. Life is amazing, but what they are, doesn't know about is those people from third country. I don't wanna say this, but tended to have a darker skin. <laughs> <laughs> they are the uh, workers, like factory workers, just like here, you know, Mexican people working in a farm. That's kind of stereotypical, but Korea has that too. The only comments I get from like black girls are, oh, well, you're only doing so well because you light skin. And that's the same thing my family says too. They're like, oh, you're going to college? It's because you light skin. You look white, because I am like the white. Actually, I have all my family photos on my computer. I'll show you everybody. This is in 2007, as you can see, it's right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's a bit of Mariah yeah. in that. <laughs> right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And so this is my mom's mom. Oh, oh, I'm the same. My mom and my mom's mom. This is my mom's dad. Oh, what's my okay. Oh, it's wow. A base. Uh huh, that's a base. He puts, that's my mom's dad. And so this is my mom's dad's mom. Mm -hmm. And that's my mom's dad. Mm -hmm. My mom's dad, my mom's dad's mom. So your great grandmother. Right, and my mom's. My mom's dad's dad. Mm -hmm. This is my mom's brother, mm -hmm. one of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's that. My mom's brother, my mom and her brother. Mm -hmm. And then my mom's other brother mm -hmm. is them. Mm -hmm. That's the same guy as before. He's just tan because it's summer. I just came out like the whitest one because my mom's mom's dad is mixed and I look just like him. We have hazel eyes. So like me, my uncle Riri and my mom, we know people who have like hazel eyes and for some reason I look just like him. Uh, so that's why, so I am the lightest person like in the family. So they attribute like success to, it's cause you light skin, cause you look white. 1996. Oh, you are so cute. Yeah. So that's, you look yeah. so cute. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So he was oh like, God, that's what? Uh -uh. <laughs> She's supposed to be in the middle color. Oh, so he did get a paternity test that said I was his kid, so that's why he takes care of me. For everyone who was wondering, yes, we did get a paternity test when I was a baby, and he is the father. He is the father. <laughs> he is the father. Um, but people always ask me too, did I lighten my skin? But look at my mom, mm -hmm. not in the summer. She's much lighter. Yeah. So it's just like, I, we change, like with change. the, we can tan so much. Oh, and this is my other little brother and sister from my mom. Oh. From my mom, yeah. So it just depends.
depends on like the time of year. Right. And right. the season. Mm -hmm. On what color we are. Mm -hmm. They attribute like success to it's because you like skin because you look white. And so I'm like, okay, I'm sure that that helps a little bit. But most of it was also because, you know, I worked hard too. You know, you can't just cut away the fact of that. But I feel like a lot of people who said that are just kind of stuck in like the cycle of like, oh, well, I'm like dark skin, so I can't do certain things that someone else can do. And I remember my little sister was saying something like that. And I was driving my little sister through some neighborhoods and we got lost because they we live in the hood. And so we had been driving for like 40 minutes and we came up on these big houses. And I remember she said, well, this must be where the white people live. And I was like, wait, hold on now. Now, why do you say that? She was like, because the houses are big, like they have money, so they must like be white people. So then I had to explain to her, OK, well, you know, that's not the case. You know, black people can have money, too. You know, you do well, you know, you can kind of break the cycle too. Like I'm going to college, like I'm doing like this stuff, you know, you can be that way too. But she just graduated from college, you know, like a few oh. weeks ago, uh, from college, no, from high school a few weeks ago oh. and her grades are excellent. And she yeah. got to a university yeah. in Illinois. So she's going to That's university exciting. to break the cycle, break the cycle. And there are some people who are very successful in Korea, like Sam Okaidi. He's a, uh, well, let me show you him, he's real fine. <laughs> oh. He's in a lot of Korean movies. Oh. He took to the culture and he's, you know, trying to learn about it. If you come abroad and you have that, oh, well, I'm black, so I'm only going to do this. Or I'm not going to do that mentality. You're not going to get anywhere. Just like if people come to America and they don't want to participate in American culture and they're like, oh, American culture is stupid. Like, you're not going to get nowhere. It doesn't mean that you're losing your identity because you're learning about Korean culture. It just means that you just happen to move abroad. I honestly haven't really had any criticisms about, you know, me, I guess, disregarding my blackness or you know not being black enough or anything like that. I honestly haven't really had that as often. I think people just kind of wonder like, oh, how could you leave your family? And like, you know, don't you miss your family and stuff like that. But as far as my race goes from other like, other Americans, other uh, like Westerners or whatever, I haven't really had that kind of response. Which is interesting because I would assume that I would. Occasionally on my YouTube videos, I do get comments um, about me not having married a black man. But also those are like, I mean, those aren't really common comments that I get. I feel like my skin color hasn't been brought up that much, except for, I will say, little kids. Like when little kids see me, they automatically go, Africa, Africa, tika, tika. I got that, I used to get Africa, tika, tika. I don't even know what that means. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It took me like a year to convince these kindergarten kids that I was, from America and I wasn't from Africa. Because, you know, they see me, I'm obviously brown and their automatic association is Africa. And I feel like that's the thing I get the most is just everyone, a lot of people think I'm African, which isn't obviously, that is not like an insult, but it's kind of like irritating that it's assumption, like without being like, where are you from? They're like, oh, you must be from Africa, right? Like, so that can be um, a little bit annoying, but I also find that I, um, you know, I guess dark, I guess. I, I mean, I'm not like super dark, but I'm like medium brown. I'm chocolate. <laughs> chocolate. I'm, I'm chocolate. Yeah. I'm chocolatey. But I'm not like what a lot of Korean people consider like dark, dark, dark. Mm -hmm. So sometimes people ask me if I'm mixed, which I think is really weird because I think I very clearly just look like a black girl. But I do get asked that a lot. Like, oh, like, what are you mixed with? Or, oh, like, you're not as black as like, I thought black people were. On the other hand, history has revealed how Korean media negatively depicts African ethnicity for comedy, which has caused critical debate between Korean and international netizens. Even K-pop idols have posted images of themselves dressing up in black stereotypical outfits, speaking in black sense, and even wearing full-on blackface for public consumption. Shin Dong and Shim Shin Chop on. We don't want to talk about it. You know what? You know what? We don't want to talk about it. <laughs> we just ready on the channel. We don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it gets that bad. I could not resist to ask for Susanna's thoughts on racial imitation like blackface. Here we go. I never realized, uh, you know, outside of Korea, people actually make fun of Asian people, like being yellow skin, you know, chinky eyes, and, you know, uh, speak with accent. I never realized that, like, until I moved here. That was kind of shocking to me, because something that, you know, um, 
I didn't even know. Probably if I'm still living in Korea or 10 years ago, I might watch the comedy show and it dressed up like a African, you know, some, you know, tribes and whatever. That can be very racist too, because that's actually insulting a one uh, certain race or certain culture, right? Because people are looking at it and laugh at it. So I, probably I did that too. Because I wasn't really aware of, you know, what's actually behind of this imitating certain race. What I see is their act and what kind of topic they're talking about during comedy show. Susanna's honest response had me wondering about the other nationalities who also mock black people for entertainment. China and Japan are other Asian countries that have been exposed for doing this to name a couple. But considering how this is already a long documentary, let's just go back and focus on Korea. From school when I was in Korea, especially history class, um, they always say uh, we are the one nation, we are the one blood, we are the we are the one, we are no other kinds. I think that idea or philosophy came from the during World War II, because Japan actually did take over everything. Well, they're trying to take over our own um, nationality, our own culture. So that's why I think that idea was came from there. That's how they, you know, um, regained that independence. That was our foundation. So when you see something different, you easily react. It's like, whoa, who are you? I remember like when I was little because I didn't really have the environment have a lot of you know foreigners around me. So that's that will that will be my reaction. It's like when you see something who's look different or who's from different country or different culture, I'll just be like, okay, who are you? Compared to America is, we have a long, you know, uh, times to get to know uh, different people, get to know adopting different culture. Probably that was the one that uh, Korean people are kind of close-minded, like maybe they can be very super racist. So the biggest problem I think with like stuff in Korea is that it's like last minute mm -hmm. and you know we like talks about that like there's a whole TV show that now I just picked up and we're filming this Friday I mean this Saturday and this Sunday mm -hmm. so it's like okay well why didn't you put it in advance so that's the thing that makes it more of a woman like if I know in advance that this week and next week is gonna be hectic then I can mentally prepare mm -hmm. but then it's like I'm like oh yeah I've got a free day and then like I get a call and I'm like uh, but sometimes I just deny. I'm like, no, I'm absolutely, my schedule's absolutely full. I can't do it the following week or we're not doing it at all. Cause I'm like, whatever, I don't need that money. Mm -hmm. Not that bad for my mental sanity. You have to be like in the Korean culture. No, if you're going to be working and filming stuff, you're mm -hmm. going to have to like, sometimes film. I'm lucky now the things that I'm doing now are like relatively, relatively like quick and don't like take a long time to do. You just have to have that mentality where you're ready to work all the time, even the weekend. And they're going to call you at the most inconvenient times and they're gonna need you to do stuff like in a day. So you have like 40 hour or 50 hour work weeks? This is the kind of range between 40 and 50? Mm, well, including YouTube, I feel like it's probably more cause YouTube is just more anyway, I feel like. Mm -hmm. But the work work that I do, it varies. Since I'm kind of like an entertainer here, mm -hmm. it all like, it depends on the week. Like maybe there's a week where there's nothing but EBS. Mm -hmm. So then the only additional work I might have is just the like six, five to six hours of like EBS filming on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I spoke Korean at my job and they treated me like a real Korean. And so I would tell them I'm American, I don't know this stuff. And they would get upset with me sometimes because I didn't know things. I mean, not everybody, but every now and then there'd be like times where they expected me to be like a Korean, but I don't have that culture. I know about it, but it's not the first thing that comes to my head, you know? So the pressure came from like the work world. Yeah, to like conform to, to conform. Korean society, and that's really hard for me. I really struggle with adopting to Korean culture because I'm so American inside. Like, I cannot let that go. And I don't want to. It's just, like, really hard to uh, remember to, like, bow to somebody or to, like, let this person be first. Just, like, these little rules. It's really, really hard for me to um, look up to, I guess. The industry in itself is just hard. Not even, like, for foreigners, but just for Koreans as well. It's just really hard. So, even I did a couple, like, TV shows and after like one or two times I was like, this is really stressful. Like memorizing stuff, you have to be quick and think you get like one chance. And if you do not do amazing that first time, they will not put you back. So it's just like, in general, it's just really hard to make it an entertainment career. I started doing TV stuff 
and just be goofy, be friendly, and connect with people in a real, genuine way on YouTube, and that makes a difference. Like, I don't have to go out and force it, you know? Just, just be you. You know what I'm saying? Go! Oh, I love it. That ending. <laughs> that was a perfect way to end that. It's a little bit awkward, number one, because most of the stuff that they have is geared towards lighter skin complexions, so I find sometimes they just like don't know how to help me. Like I walk in the store and number one, they think they're not gonna be able to communicate with me so they get scared. But also I think they're just like, what would I recommend to her? Like, I, you know, like they, they seem to just freeze up. Like I don't even know what we have that's um, available for her. And sometimes I feel kind of awkward when I'm looking at products and I know they're thinking like, she, that's not for her, <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah, it's kind of annoying. Like, I don't want to use whitening creams, and all the creams I try to get, they're all white, they're all whitening. And I have no desire to whiten myself, so I have to be really careful when I'm looking at products and checking what what is in the products and what they're using um, to, you know, make sure I'm not buying anything that has any, like, bleaching agents or anything like that in it. So sometimes if I do need help, like, I'll have to ask them something in Korean, and then they'll be a little bit more likely to like, oh, let me help her, like she can speak Korean. My mom sends me everything. My makeup often stays, or when I go back to the I buy everything. Even like the face products, like washing my face and stuff like that, because I prefer US brands. I mean, there's good brands here too, but I typically buy all of my needs, like hair stuff, everything from the States when I bring here. Here, there's just like, there's no way. But I mean, you can't expect them to cater to like our skin color as well. Aside from being racially ambiguous, Megan has been accused of disowning her blackness because of her hair styling choices. I wish I were making this stuff up. Meanwhile, non-black K-vloggers are usually welcome to do whatever they want with their appearance with little backlash from their communities. Oh, but they might get the occasional Koreaboo comments a few times, which in my opinion has lost its oomph as an insult. Am I right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> like I feel like with the natural hair movement, there are some people who are like judge you if your hair's straight, and it's like you can't take away your blackness just because of what you have on the outside. Yeah, outside. By yeah. the end of the day, it's like you're black. Like you're not gonna ever not be black. Right. You'll always be black. Everybody has different values that they put into hair, mm -hmm. and so I think before I cut it off, the reason why too is because I feel like I valued my hair. Like I thought, oh, you know, this is my hair. I gotta you know protect it, keep it nice, you know, keep it looking fresh all the time. But that was like where my value was in, I feel like, and so that's another reason why I cut it off. And then I learned, okay, well, you know, hair is just an accessory. I made a video about afros and curly afros in Korea, and I talked about that like in that video too, about how I just learned to see like hair is just, okay, it's an accessory, like my nails. Am I gonna put fake nails on? Am I gonna wear my real nail? Am I gonna color it today? Am I gonna let it grow out? Am I gonna cut it in? So then my value didn't come from my hair, so I'm like, all right, it can be, you know, whatever way. But of course, I like to make sure I keep it look fresh and nice but it's not like my main value a point anymore but I think the natural hair movement is good for people who really don't like value themselves and they think that their beauty comes for like their hair because that was what it was for me so that's why I cut it off and then I learned all right whatever right right so that's why I magic permed it I was like yeah well I want it to be straight now so I'll just perm it so crusty okay I mean I need to flat iron this part get this texture in there this yes. part. Yeah. Let's zoom in on the part where she doesn't want to. Zoom in on that part. <laughs> I'm about to fly on that part. That's why I kept it because I need a new like magic perm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I straighten it and do pull, you know, like right. Oh. So my friend Ladisha, I remember Ladisha. I was like, Ladisha, cut your hair. We was in college together. <laughs> so she tried it. She was like, Megan, no. <laughs> and then she just permed it back again. <laughs> That's what happens. So but, but that's how people are. Yeah, but I think it just reflects where you are in your mindset. I think those people who are saying, you need to cut it off and wear it natural, I feel like because that's where they are, they were at a point where they're learning to come to right. terms and love and appreciate their hair. And then after they do that, they'll let people know like what I did. I'm like, okay, whatever. You do you. I think that's definitely some of it. I don't think it's necessarily just my skin tone because I think if there happened to be a white girl and she had big boobs in Korea, she would get the exact same reaction. So I don't know if I think it is skin tone. Um, it's definitely because I'm not Korean though. Like they would not have, some men of course would have the guts, but for the most part, they wouldn't have the guts to approach a Korean girl in that way. Um, and because I'm foreign, they go foreign, 
like she's gonna be down for getting down you know like when i go to like a club or something i've had people like literally a guy like walk up and just grab my boobs with two hands like exactly like this and he just walked away or like grabbed my butt or like make comments about those two things but i got a big old booty and i got titties so you know like i can't <laughs> really avoid that so i definitely felt also like when i was dating that because of my body plus the fact that i'm not korean because of all of those things together i felt like i was definitely like over sexualized you know like i felt like they assumed a lot of things about me guess what in south korea you can legally be discriminated against by your job or by local businesses if you are seen as a foreigner and as of 2018 south korea was still lacking an anti-discrimination law which was recommended by the United Nations Human Rights Committee in 2015. The reason for this delay? Lack of public consensus. Maybe Korean government or Korean people are not very recognized that uh, they are getting a lot of immigrants and they are become diverse country like America does. But they are not really considered as their priority as other um, what's going on in their country. So I think probably that's why, that's why it's not only Korea, but also Japan or China or any other Asian country is not really aware of it. Japan is very diverse. You find any people from any country in Japan, but still they don't have that, you know, they don't have that law. So my assumption will be something's gonna, something's gonna big, you know, happen and then they just re realize that's how, you know, lawmakers does. Like, something happens like, oh, okay, we have to work on it. She's right. In fact, considering how the U.S. delayed people of color with legal protection, Korea is in better shape as a young multicultural democracy. I see some of the um, news from Korea. There's a, like some immigrant from other country rape a Korean girl, something like that. I mean, that's kind of like serious topic, but still, I think that the position here is the same. They think that like most of the you know immigrants are criminals or they are you know oh, we are just living this country as a Korean in Korea, but the foreigners are you know messing around our country. They think that way too, just like here. They have to look over Korea, their civilians first. That can be very you know gives. A, anyone like misconception, but I think that's what I see. But when it comes to dating in Korea, black women have little to worry about. But could marriage be a different story? Is it true that Korean men will never bring home a black woman for mom and dad to meet and hopefully marry? First, I will say that that's not true that there are no Korean men who will marry you. Obviously, I got married to one, and I do know other people who are in successful marriages with Korean guys, so I just want to black women. So I want to say that is not true, um, but, but I will say you have a very small chance of being able to get married to a Korean guy and that for the women who decide to come to Korea, you know, specifically for the purpose of marrying a Korean, I would say that is not a good reason to come to Korea because it is hard. It's dating out here is hard. I've been here since 2008, so I've had quite a few dating experiences in Korea. And I had a couple of times where I met these guys, they were like, you know, they told me like, yeah, I want to be your boyfriend. And I thought things were going really well. And then they would just disappear. Like, I just like wouldn't hear from, I got a text at four o'clock in the morning, like, hey, I'm never going to call you again. And then that was it. And more than once I would be dating, I would meet these guys and they were really nice and we're like dating and I'm thinking everything's going really well. And then they would just disappear. I feel like it's a little bit different from the States or like from the West where I feel like guys would be, they're not going to try to call you their girlfriend or anything. And they'll sort of be a little bit clear that this is like a sort of boom boom. Yeah. <laughs> In Korea, they'll be like, yeah, I want to be, you know, your boyfriend. And he'll be like, oh, that's great. And then like a week later, they're just like, and no. Either number one, they just wanted the experience of like dating a black girl to sell, tell their friends that they had like dated a black girl before. A fetish or something. Yeah, some kind of fetish, which I could tell very quickly and I usually try to cut that. When they start talking about hip hop for half the conversation, half the <laughs> you just got it. That's when I'm like, next, and like, next. Maybe they are really interested in you, but they do realize that like, it's gonna be hard, like to convince their parents like to let to allow them which is really important in korea to to allow them to marry 
a foreigner, and especially a black foreigner, is hard. So even if they do like you, I think some of them start to just sort of distance themselves. Like, oh, I like her, but there's no way this is gonna be anything real. I don't necessarily think this is just for black women, I think it's just for foreign women in general, but I would say especially being black and, you know, a lot of their parents probably worrying about having a mixed child that's like darker. People who are saying like, it's not possible, you're gonna have a hard time. I had no trouble dating here, I will be specific, because I had someone commenting on my video about like, Black, no, like no Korean man wants to even date a black girl. Like you're not gonna be able to find anyone to date you. No, I had no problems with that. I wanna say very clearly, I had no problems with that. <laughs> okay. How have you been coping with that? I've never had that. Cause see, I kind of ran out when I was like 18. I was like, okay, I just graduated, I'm leaving. So I like moved to South Carolina for like a little bit. Like right after I um, graduated. I mean, of course, Home yes, service. I miss them and I want to see them, but I've been like, all right, I've been seeing y'all for 18 years now. I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. then I like went to Florida and went to college. And I mean, I would see them maybe, you know, once a year or so. But see, this is, I'm a terrible person to ask about this. I mean, we, we could count online, mm -hmm. I mean, on the phone. I kind of had to like be alone mm -hmm. for a while. Like since I was like young, I would just kind of, what do they call it? A latchkey kid? So basically I was like by myself all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's kind of why you're doing so well now. Like you kind of have so. I've never learned earlier on. Yeah, I think so. I've never been like, oh, I need like my parents to do this. I always had to do stuff for them. Cause I mean, like if they come home, like, I mean, they were kind of young and cray. So like they come home like late or they just like don't come home. I'm like, all right, I guess I'm making myself something to eat. I'm like, hey, you're not gonna get up and make me no breakfast. I remember one time I was seven, I was like, yeah. You gonna get up and make me some breakfast? He was like, mmm, mmm. So then I remember I was like, all right, I'm gonna just try and make some. I remember I made some like grits and eggs and, and bacon. I was so proud. It was good too. And I brought it to my dad. He was like, mmm. Well, my family's been here, uh, but I go home so often. I go home like once every six months or uh, at least once a year, usually once every six months. Um, I talk to my mom twice a day. Someone has a baby, a birth that you can't be there, this can be there. So that is difficult, but I just try to stay in contact with them as much as possible. So I don't feel like super homesick. I, there was a time where I did feel really homesick, but now I, my mom calls me every day. <laughs> she calls me every day. I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. Like, I know I'm supposed to have been homesick, <laughs> but honestly, never been that person like I've never I I feel like I'm always the kind of person who just really quickly adapts to where I am and then I'm just kind of fine like there are times when like I watch you know like it's Thanksgiving and I see like my huge ass family getting together um, eating good food and dancing and stuff where I go like oh I wish I could be there or like birthdays I've missed and stuff like that like I definitely feel like I'm missing out on certain experiences and certain things being here and not being at home, especially with my parents aging. But I feel like that's a little bit different from like homesickness. It's like, I think about it and I'm like, that sucks. But also at this point, I'm married to a Korean person. So one of us was gonna have to give up our home country. So, you know, I am the one that did that and made that sacrifice. And it's something I, I don't know, I feel sort of okay with. I don't know if I should or not. <laughs> to Korea and I think because I'm so far away from like my people I've come to appreciate my blackness even more especially with what's going on in this with what's going on in the states with you know the increased police brutality and just sort of the attacks on my people I feel like because I'm so far away there's just this part of me that really is trying to like hold on to as much of my blackness as I can even just being active in the like the um, black um, brothers and sisters of Korea Facebook group like 
just being like when something goes down, having that to like go to and having you know, being able to sort of talk with those people about things that are important to me. I think that's become more important to me since I've been here. And I feel like when I was in the States, because it was just there, I never thought about it, never thought about my blackness. I never thought about who I was as a black woman that much, which is surprising, but I just didn't. And I honestly, I always thought like, yeah, I'm black, but that's not one, that's not something, the most defining factor about me. And I still, obviously, I still don't think that, but I feel like it's become, it's like moved way up the list in things that are quite important to me because I'm so far away from it. The representation of black people here is not great. I can just say that much, it is not great. My goal is to try my best to not act too ignorant in public, you know? <laughs> <laughs> to keep things like, you know, to like, I, I, the one of the hard things is always feeling like, no matter what I do, I'm a representative of black people because I am, unfortunately. I mean, it's not necessarily something I always want, but you know, just trying my best to, in public and when I'm dealing with Korean people, to put my best foot forward and to, you know, try to be the best me or whatever. What I took from the women in this documentary is that the black experience in Korea is not necessarily one dimensional, but rather what you make of it as an individual who is either willing to immerse themselves in a new way of life or not. And yes, some Koreans may seem prejudiced on the surface, but are just like other nations who are unfamiliar with new cultures suddenly emerging into their homeland. Doesn't really make it okay or any better, but at least we have clarity on it. And while the older generation may stay stuck in their racist ways, new generations of Koreans are adopting open-minded perspectives on racial equality. I have opportunity to live in a different country and see different cultural, different environment. Um, what I realize more and more is we are all same. Like we can, we might have a different ideas and different perspective, but the whole core idea is all same. Maybe we do something differently, but we are all human beings. So we think every basic, like basic information and basic ideas are pretty much the same. That's why what I realized since I moved here. Black women like Jenny, Whitney, and Megan are examples of how foreigners can still flourish in a society where homogenous attitudes are established. There are certain things in society that will and can like hold you back. But I feel like these days, as long as you work hard and you actually really apply yourself and you are like the best at what you're doing or like one of the top people, then I think that you'll be fine. You just kind of have to go for it and it's going to be uncomfortable and like it takes time. Like in the beginning when you start making YouTube videos, for example, like you don't get no views like and you put in so much work and so much time. Like it takes like a year before like people even like really start watching. What defines like who becomes successful or not is people who quit and don't quit. Because like so many people since I've been in Korea, they're like, oh, I want to make YouTube videos. And they make like three videos and then they're like, oh, well, I wasn't getting any views. I was like, of course not. Like you didn't do it long enough. Like it takes time. Some people like it took them years before they like actually you know became famous it was just like one day they just had like their like big break even look at Beyonce she's been working since she was like 15 you know 14 her parents had her running in stilettos and stuff and they were like we gonna do this and she was like all in so I feel like if you just go all in with what you're doing and just work hard and make sure it's a niche like something that you know that you can actually do well and that you enjoy doing then you know I think that you know you'll be fine I mean it's not gonna be easy and it's gonna take time and it might take years but I feel like you can definitely do it so no matter what your circumstance have the right attitude and see all there is to see that this world has to offer thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time probably not in a documentary because that'll take another five years
good when you logged. Oh, so sick. smile when you And look back. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> 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 Look you! It's so fun to have you guys guess Korean words. I was gonna choose some of my favorite Korean words, like funny ones. Y'all gonna hear them be like, what? Ding a -ling. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny, I saw y'all walking down there. I filmed y'all on my like, phone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, I seen the bus. I was like, I bet that's the one they're gonna get off. Yeah. Oh my god. Especially if they have a very best of people. Okay. Let me just push my hair back a little bit. <laughs> okay, that's better. They have this uh, wooden table, and then they have this uh, mother of pearl. Mm. They just like tap it, and they have a uh, patterns and shapes out of it. Korean um, items. Mm. Mother of pearl. Mm. Mother of pearl is like mm -mm. this. Mm. So they take this uh, mother of pearl and just make this beautiful. Um, wow. <laughs> and you can wrap it up. <laughs> 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 I got, like, it was died. <laughs>